I think uh, there's a lot of promise coming from research, um, and um, that's uh, what I'm going to try to share with you today. What we've learned about Loewy's Dietz syndrome and what that may mean for medical therapies, what, the ability to take a pill that makes a difference. Now, um, we have studied a very similar condition called Marfan syndrome for 20 years. And in fact, many of the advances that we've made in Loewy's Dietz syndrome relate to fa findings that we made in Marfan syndrome. So I, I thought as a, as a background, I should tell you where we're at in Marfan syndrome and then tell you what that means for people with Loewy's Dietz syndrome. The, uh, this is a slide that I made in 1990, um, and it was uh, when we had first uh, found the gene for Marfan syndrome, which is called, uh, called the fibrillin-1 gene. And back then, we had a really very simple hypothesis that you have a deficiency in this gene that leads to Loewy's Dietz syndrome. Um, and in the, I'm sorry, in this case, Marfan syndrome. Um, but uh, I then looked in my slides and found a slide that I made two years later, um, and it, it illustrates that there was a lot more to learn um, and that things were much more complicated than we had originally predicted. Now here I'm just showing you A, B, C, D, and E, but uh, what we've been able to do now is fill in these dots um, and from that learn about new medical strategies that we can use. Now Marfan syndrome is something that I think many of you are aware of. In fact, uh, many people with Loewy's Dietz syndrome at one time carried the diagnosis of Marfan syndrome. Um, unlike Loewy's Dietz syndrome, people with Marfan syndrome do develop dislocation of the lens of the eye. Um, we now have good information, you know, now spanning five years to state that this is not a problem in Loewy's Dietz syndrome. Um, but like Loewy's Dietz syndrome, people with Marfan Marfan syndrome can have skin issues, including skin stretch marks. Um, you can have progressive dilatation of the root of the aorta just as it's leaving the heart. Um, and you can also have something that's called dural ectasia, where the sac around the spine begins to expand and uh, can actually erode the bone of the spine, leading to these sacs uh, that are in the pelvis. Most often, this is not something that causes a problem, but it's something we can see when we do x-ray studies. Uh, people with Marfan syndrome can develop a problem called pneumothorax, uh, where air collects inside the chest because of a puncture of the lung. And we've also occasionally observed this in Loewy's Dietz syndrome. It's not a major factor, but uh, something that we occasionally see. Now, uh, we had initially a weak tissues hypothesis for Marfan syndrome. You're missing this connective tissue protein that normally gives tissue strength, and that leads to the tissues failing over time. Um, but this weak tissues hypothesis had many problems. Uh, for example, why should weakness of the tissues cause the bones to grow too long? You know, that didn't make sense. Why should weakness of the tissues cause the facial features of either Marfan syndrome or Loewy's Dietz syndrome? Uh, why should weakness of the tissues cause the low muscle mass and low fat stores that we see in many people with Marfan syndrome and some people with Loewy's Dietz syndrome? Each of these problems really couldn't be explained simply by saying the tissues are weak. And really, we're more suggestive of the fact that the cells weren't getting the signal to behave properly, that the cells were uh, uh, getting the wrong signals. Um, we uh, went on to make mouse models of Marfan syndrome. Uh, and here we've targeted the gene for Marfan syndrome, the fibrillin-1 gene. And we found that these Marfan mice showed all of the features that we see in people, including curvature of the spine, uh, widening of the air sacs in the lung, thickening of the heart valves, abnormalities of the muscle, um, but most importantly, progressive enlargement of the aorta just as it's leaving the heart, uh, that in these mice did lead to aortic tear, a rupture, and early death of the mice if we left them untreated. So we went on to learn that this protein, the fibrillin protein in Marfan syndrome, does something more 
than simply serve as glue to, to hold the tissues together, that it actually binds to and regulates the function of a growth factor molecule that we call transforming growth factor beta, or TGF beta. We went on to learn in Marfan syndrome that if you don't have enough of this fibrillin protein between the cells of the body, that there's too much activation of this TGF beta molecule that then does go on to stimulate the cells by binding to a receptor that sits on the cell surface. And that this uh, TGF beta stimulation of the cells leads to many of the features of Marfan syndrome, including the lung problem, the mitral valve thickening, the aortic aneurysm, the skeletal muscle uh, weakness, and the la lack of fat. And the way that we could show that this TGF beta was causing all of these is that in the Marfan mice, we could prevent all of these simply by injecting the mice with an antibody that binds to TGF beta and prevents it from stimulating cells. So in a mouse that's still missing fibrillin 1, the glue, what we thought of as glue, you could prevent all of the features of Marfan syndrome simply by blocking this TGF beta molecule. So uh, you, we, we can't now, and we couldn't then, inject people with a TGF beta blocking antibody. So we asked, is there a drug, and even better, an FDA approved drug, that might mimic some of this protection? And our attention turned to a specific drug that I think all of you know about called Lozartan, which is a blood pressure lowering medication that's been used for 20 years to lower high blood pressure, but also has the ability to block TGF beta. So it seemed like a magic bullet, something that lowers blood pressure, something we think is good for people with aortic enlargement, and also blocks this growth factor molecule. Now, um, how does Lozartan work? Well, Lozartan works in a pathway that's called the angiotensin II pathway. This angiotensin II molecule can stimulate two different receptors that again sit on cell surfaces. Uh, when it stimulates the type 1 receptor, that stimulates TGF beta. When it stimulates the type 2 receptor, there was some evidence that that actually blocks TGF beta. Um, so the, if we used a medication that prevented the formation of angiotensin 2, something called an ACE inhibitor that you might also have heard about, we would be blocking both the bad pathway but also a potentially protective pathway. Whereas Lozartan simply blocks this side and actually stimulates signaling through the protective side. So that's why we chose Lozartan rather than an ACE inhibitor, for example. And we showed that Lozartan can fully prevent aortic aneurysm in our mouse model of Marfan syndrome. So here is the aortic wall of a Marfan mouse that's untreated. You can see the wall is very thick. You can see that all these black elastic fibers are fragmented and split apart. You can see the big aorta as it leaves the heart. You can see lung emphysema, and you can see that the skeletal muscle looks very chaotic. If we treat these same mice with Lozartan, the aortic wall looks perfectly normal. The elastic fibers are nicely preserved. You can see that the aorta, as it leaves the heart, is normal in size. And remarkably, this blood pressure medication also addressed other features, improving the lung by um, uh, causing these air spaces to become smaller, and improving the, uh, the skeletal muscle, causing a more normal appearance and greater strength of the skeletal muscle. So um, we now have gone on to test Lozartan in a different mouse model of Marfan syndrome that actually progresses to aortic tear, aortic rupture, and death if we don't treat the mice. And here we did a trial where we either used normal mice that we call wild-type mice, in, as shown in green. We used Marfan mice that were treated with placebo, just sugar. Um, or we used Marfan mice that were treated with Lozartan. And I'm showing you how many the mi of the mice are still surviving without aortic rupture over time. 
You can see in the placebo-treated Marfan mice, death due to aortic rupture is starting just at about a month of age, and that it progresses rapidly. Each of these little downward ticks is another mouse that died from aortic rupture. Whereas the Lozartan-treated Marfan mice are going way out until well, about 180 days before you see any death. And in fact, the Lozartan-treated Marfan mice behaved identically to the normal mice, the mice that don't have Marfan syndrome. There was no significant difference between the two. So this told us that this blood pressure medication is not only preventing the aorta from getting big, but it's actually preventing what we worry about, that's aortic tear, aortic rupture, and death. Now, uh, be, uh, we, there is now a large multi-center clinical trial of Lozartan in Marfan syndrome that's ongoing. But pending these definitive results, we felt compelled to treat a subset of children with the most severe form of Marfan syndrome. I'm showing you the aortic root growth curves, the size of the aorta over time, in two of these very severe children with Marfan syndrome. And you can see that they show unrelenting growth of their aorta despite maximal treatment with either a beta blocker or an ACE inhibitor. Here are the graphs of two, uh, the first two such children that we treated with Lozartan. Again, very rapid growth until Lozartan was started, and then no further growth of the aorta, now in some of these children with up to five years of follow-up. You might ask, well, is Lozartan just a better blood pressure medication? Is that the whole story? And the answer is no, because the blood pressure of these children while on Lozartan is identical to their blood pressure when they were taking other medications that didn't make a difference. Uh, so the, the lesson that we learn there is that Lozartan is doing more than simply lowering blood pressure. And our bet is that what it's doing is blocking TGF-beta activity. So uh, as I mentioned, there is this large trial going on. It will still be three years before we know the result of the Marfan trial. Now, we, we wonder whether everyone needs the same dose of Lozartan or not. Whether some people need a low dose, some people need a medium dose, and some people need a very high dose. Right now, we have no way of making that judgment. Um, but we wondered whether this high activity of TGF-beta in the tissues of the body would result in high levels of TGF-beta floating around in the blood in the body. Uh, so we again took our mice and we uh, took blood samples and found that by six months of age, the Marfan mice shown in red had much higher levels of TGF-beta than their brothers and sisters without Marfan syndrome shown in green. And we showed that regular dose Lozartan could bring this back down to normal, and that ultra high dose Lozartan could actually drive this level below normal. So this suggested that the amount of TGF-beta circulating in the bloodstream might let us decide who needs more Lozartan to get their TGF-beta level down to where we want it. One thing that was very important is that the level of circulating TGF-beta in the bloodstream showed excellent correlation with the size of the aorta in these mice. So it told us that, t that this circulating TGF-beta is also a prognostic marker. We could look at the level and say, your aorta is going to grow fast. We could look at another mouse and say, you have a low level of circulating TGF-beta. Your aorta is not going to grow so fast. So this uh, really turned out to be everything we hoped it would be in mice. Now, the next major question is, does this work in people?